Awesome, thank you. All righty, so we'll go ahead and, and roll through on this. Um, just quickly start by giving a, a personal story. When I got started in amateur radio many years ago, it was with um, the local uh, Aries Races group in uh, Oakland County, Michigan. And we were doing a simulated emergency test. They wanted me to go to a hospital and to pass traffic between the hospital and the emergency operations center. And I basically said, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> so uh, that started my journey down. Uh, what is a radiogram and, and how to move traffic over the air and, and that type of thing. And so um, hopefully you all find this interesting. Again, I uh, welcome questions and um, try to answer those as they come. Just put the questions in the chat. Um, Again, if uh, folks would uh, just confirm that you're able to hear me, I see some folks saying that they might not be able to. Okay. Okay, for those that are having audio issues, I'm not gonna be able to dive into those, but um, we're gonna keep rolling through this session. And um, again, we'll hold future sessions. And again, this recording will be posted, assuming everything looks good uh, once we get things uh, finalized on, on where I put the splices and those types of things. So let's get rolling here on uh, national traffic system in the, in the radiogram format. So. You can let me switch slides. There we go. So let's give a kind of high level what we're going to talk about. Um, just a, a quick overview of the national traffic system, the skills that you gain from participating in the NTS, uh, the radiogram format and its components. And then we'll do a quick hands-on practice uh, just to give you a spin with it and see if you have any, any questions on it. Uh, there are some animations in this. I'm hoping the um, recording will capture them, but they are not uh, essential to the training. So if you see the slides kind of uh, load in a jerky manner type of thing, um, hopefully the recording will get everything okay, but it's not gonna impact anything on the, on the presentation. So, all right. Uh, Quick overview on things. It's an organized network of NTS of amateur radio operators who move traffic, or in our case, uh, messages uh, that started back in 1915 uh, with the ARRL setting it up as a, a formal system to relay messages across the country. And this is where the uh, relay comes in in American Radio Relay League. Traffic is relayed from one location to another. And so types of traffic that we can move over the traffic system, uh, emergency traffic, so that's uh, life or death items, requests for essential supplies, uh, or needs, uh, needs specific instructions on how to do something. Priority traffic, where time is of the essence, that could be about injuries or number of impacted. Um, items that are uh, urgent during an emergency, but don't meet the threshold of emergency traffic. Uh, then welfare traffic, that's where you're inquiring about um, how folks are doing. Uh, I might be in an affected area and I wanna let my family know I'm okay. And that, that would go through as uh, welfare traffic. Um, and then routine messages, which is the, the catch all for everything else. Uh, and routine messages outside of uh, emergencies or other incidents are what help us test the system and build those skills ahead of time so that once you're in the incident, uh, we're hopefully a well-oiled machine and ready to go. Um, NTS is primarily set up for US and Canada. We can move messages internationally. Uh, that of course goes through all the, uh, the international uh, party agreements with other countries. And uh, if you're moving uh, traffic or if you're moving a message for a third party, let's say someone asks me to send a message on their behalf, so that'd be third party traffic, then all the third party agreements apply. But um, generally speaking, um, US and Canada, um, you can do this over voice. And so that could be a two meter net or it could be an HF net by phone, uh, Morse code, um, so CW nets. And there's also the uh, digital traffic network and uh, where radiograms are moved using uh, digital modes. So an example of how a message is relayed, uh, give a high level overview of the traffic flow. Um, 
in many cases, I won't say all or anything like that. Let me see if I can get my fancy laser pointer going. Um, messages will start at the local level or the section level. So thinking here in the, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, for those of you that participate in the two meter traffic nets that happen on a couple of repeaters here, uh, those are local nets. And so in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, we can pass these messages here in the Metroplex. If something is staying in the Metroplex, then it stays at the local net level. If we need to move something out of the area, whether that's somewhere else in Texas or across the country, then the message starts making its way up to region nets and or area nets where it can then jump across and then come back down uh, until it gets to its local delivery area. And then an amateur radio operator will make that last mile delivery at that um, local area. Uh, we try to do that as best as we can. I know sometimes here in DFW, um, if it's in Texas, but would generally move through a, a different net, we would prefer that. But if that's not possible, then we'll look for a volunteer here that's in Dallas to uh, make that phone call for that last mile delivery to say Waco or something like that, uh, rather than wait for someone to come in on uh, the Texas CW net or something like that to move it. So uh, given a little bit better example here, let's say I want to send a message to a family member in Michigan. The way that I would do that would be to uh, put together my radiogram with what it is I want to say, and then I would check in on the traffic net uh, saying that I have one message going to Michigan. So I would list that traffic. That's what that's officially called. Um, and then the net control station would work to find somebody that can help it move uh, in that uh, direction. And so uh, once that station is able to pick it up, then they would move it across, uh, let's say in this example to Indiana, if it's going over the digital traffic network, there is a digital uh, node in uh, Indiana that is uh, there to help move messages across. Uh, so that station would, would move it to that system in Indiana. And then a station in Michigan would go into that uh, digital node in Indiana and say, I have anything headed this way, and then pick that one up and take it to Michigan. And then once uh, they have that, then they would then call wherever I'm sending it to make that final delivery. And final deliveries are generally over uh, the phone. So when you uh, put your radiogram together, you'd put a phone number and we'll go into those details when we go through the, the radiogram uh, format. Um, before I move on, any quick questions on the, um, the high level overview? It's really kind of a 30,000 foot view, but um, any questions on, on the national traffic system as, as a whole? Okay, so how is it how is it determined if traffic will move via uh, a, a voice mode, a phone mode, or a, or a digital or or Morse code? So let's take the example of it's brought to the, the the traffic net here on two meters, and so I would use my voice right and say I have one going to Michigan. Depending on who is checked in. Uh, we will look for an option of how do we keep it moving towards its destination. And so if uh, someone has checked in that says, I can take messages over the digital traffic network, then we would move it that way. Um, if, for example, there's nobody available that can move it, then uh, we would generally ask that station to hold on to that traffic. Now, that can that can work if it's a routine message, right? I want to send somebody well wishes or something like that. It's not emergency or priority traffic. Uh, if there is emergency or priority traffic, let's say there's an incident going on, uh, then there would be some more work behind the scenes to help stand up the national traffic system uh, if and when it's called to service to have um, more folks on and monitoring and able to move things. So it would be less of a challenge if there was a need to stand up the national traffic system to move things. But during off times, when we're moving routine messages, as folks are building their skills and, and that type of thing, it'll depend on who's checked in during the nets. I'll give you an example of, of how a net check-in looks just to help paint this picture a little bit better. But hopefully that gives you a, a good overview of things. Where does someone get a list of regional or area nets? 
Uh, so that'll depend on your uh, section and how much they've posted online. Here in North Texas, we have that list on our webpage, A-R-R-L-N-T-X, as in A-R-R-L North Texas, dot org. There's a national traffic system page along with a list of all of the, um, the traffic nets that occur in uh, this area. Uh, other areas would have something similar. You could always reach out to your um, ARRL section manager or, or ideally the section traffic manager to get that information, uh, but that would be your go-to source if you can't find it online. Other questions on, on NTS? Well, if you do, go ahead and throw it in there, but I'm gonna, I'll keep moving through things for now. Uh, building amateur radio skills. So I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, one of the fun things we get into, whether it's a traffic net or a Skywarn net or you know, those types of things, however slow you think slow is, is not slow enough. <laughs> so uh, go slower than what you think slow is. Um, the idea is uh, if you are slow, then you only need to send it once. If you go too fast, you know, imagine the other person on the other end that's got a pen and a piece of paper and they're trying to write down everything that you're saying. If you go too fast, then there will be gaps, things will be missed, and they'll have to come back and say, I need you to say again everything after hospital. And you wind up burning more time that way. So the slower you go, it will feel very odd, but the slower you go, uh, the faster in the end that you can send it. Slow is fast and fast is slow. I can give you a good example of this. Let's say I wanted everybody to write this down. I need three cots, two cases of water, O positive blood, and you know, can you imagine trying to write all that down if I just gave it to you at, at, at reading speed? So lots of pauses. Need two bottles of, right? So it's very unnaturally slow, but in the end it goes much faster. Speak clearly, and you may need to enunciate some words. So instead of enunciate, you might have to slow it down a bit and say enunciate. That'll help the station on the other end hear it, uh, hopefully more clearly. And a general idea to think of when you're when you're moving these is you're not reading the message, you're sending it, you're relaying it. And it, to me, that puts a different dimension on what traffic handling is. You know, it goes beyond just, well, let me read this to you and okay, you're good to go, okay, thanks. It's, we want this thing to arrive word for word and letter for letter. It ideally would be a, a copy like a photocopy of what the person that's sending it to you has on their end that's what you should have on your end when you're especially dealing with emergency or priority traffic uh it's not the time to have the telephone game come in where it starts with i need three cots and in the end it says we're out of balloons or you know something weird like that we need the message to arrive exactly as it started You also get some additional skills on participating in formal nets. So if you're jumping in on a Skymore net or an Aries net or a, a, a traffic system net, you build up those skills on, on participating in a net and especially paying close attention to the instructions from the net control station. Uh, if the instructions, for example, are, please check in with your call sign phonetically only, then that would mean I would check in saying, Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel, and not, this is Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel, and my name is Aaron, and I am in North Dallas, and I have no, the instructions are, please check in with your call sign phonetically only. So it get, gets you used to listening to those key instructions on, on how to follow those and help the net overall flow a lot more smoothly. Uh, Proficiency in ITU phonetics, they are the gold standard in the national traffic system, so Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo. Um, if you're in a, a, a training net, like a training traffic system net, and you're starting to pick up ITU phonetics, then depending on the, the net control station, and hopefully they're nice about this, if there's a dog or a cat or something in there, you know, we want you to build this skill set. But in time, we need you to become proficient with ITU phonetics, because especially when you get into the larger area nets, regional nets, that's the gold standard. You have to use ITU phonetics. Uh, 
pro signs or pro words. Um, a lot of these are the same that are used in uh, public safety. If you've ever worked with public safety dispatchers or had a, a public safety radio, you know, one of those Motorola's that don't you dare drop it or it's thousands of dollars. Uh, Dispatchers will use a lot of the same terminologies. Uh, please say again your traffic or you know those types of things. So if you are involved with ARIES or RACES or, or other um, organizations that interface with public safety, you build up skills on, on working with pro signs. You also become uh, proficient at working with short comprehensive messages. When we get into the radiogram format, um, there are only 25 blanks that you can use to uh, send your message. And so being concise is extremely helpful. It also means that you uh, spend less time talking on the air to move it and therefore allow more traffic to keep moving. Um, for those of you that uh, have dived into the incident command system with your ARIES group or otherwise, uh, one of the takeaways that I like to say from that is uh, when the disaster begins, the time to prepare ends. And so I look at what's going on right now with COVID-19 as an example of you should have some supplies at home and be ready to stay home if need and then things, right? Well, once all the stay at home orders hit, well, you're kind of late to the party to get ready. There is no more getting ready. <laughs> there is, well, I'm going to, you know, take some actions now that I'm in this in this scenario. So by participating in traffic nets or building up your skills here, it gets you ready to go for when the emergency need happens. And that could be over the traffic system. It could also be uh, if you're working with uh, your local emergency operations center and they're working with uh, incident command system forms like ICS 213s. Uh, the format's a little different on the 213s, but the methods you use to move them over the air share a lot of similarities. So if you build those skills on the national traffic system, you can transfer those to other areas, such as moving ICS 213s uh, during an incident. When you are learning, it is okay to make mistakes. I just like to, to say that um, if you make a mistake, oops, let me turn off this uh, laser pointer. If you do make a mistake uh, during a, a regular net, uh, it is okay. The world did not end. Uh, if you know that you made a mistake, just acknowledge it and correct it and keep going. So if you're reading the, me uh, the, the traffic, the message, and you say, um, you know, south, but you meant southeast, just, oh, correction, southeast, and we will go on. If someone provides you feedback, ideally, with the premise of helping you learn and grow, that's exactly what it would be to help you build those skill sets. And I know when I got started and I sent my first message and it was a little dicey and, you know, I got that feedback, that mentoring uh, to help me build those skills. And so that comes with, with time. And David has it exactly right in the chat. After a while, you get a good natural feel for this. Uh, I know one time I took a uh, a piece of traffic in the car. I stopped. <laughs> you know, we don't want you moving traffic while you're driving. Uh, and I just grabbed a blank uh, piece of paper and started writing on it because I just, I know the flow. In time, this becomes more natural. It's like building any other skill. With time, you build that muscle memory and it just becomes second nature. And by continuing to participate in traffic nets, it keeps the, the machine well oiled, so to speak, and, and keeps that, that proficiency there. So if there's one big takeaway I can give you, whether it's about traffic handling or participating in Skywarn nets, um, we all started by not knowing. And the way that we can learn is by trying it out and learning from our mistakes along the way. Um, as long as we're making smart mistakes, right, which means I don't just jump into a traffic net with no idea and start chatting, right, I start getting that base level knowledge and start applying it. And then over time, I build on that more and more. And I might make a mistake here and there along the way and get some of that feedback and mentoring. But over time, you know, you've built all that up. And, you know, it's interesting that how some folks worry so much about what other people are thinking about them when the other person is busy thinking about <laughs> what the other person thinks, right? It, 
I still make mistakes on the air. And, you know, I was, yep, I oops. And, you know, it's, you know, one of those fun, I'm putting the amateur in amateur radio today. And, uh, you know, we just, we just keep going and move on and, you know, everything's good. So, uh, you know, just give it a shot. That's the biggest piece of, of, of advice I can give you here uh, on this, on this uh, talk. All right, before we go into the radiogram format, any other quick questions that have, have come up? As everybody feverishly types away, maybe, I don't know. Well, we'll keep rolling. And again, if you have questions, feel free to throw them in there. I still have the, the chat open on the side. So, all right, the radiogram format, this allows us to standardize what's moving uh, over the air. And so we can be more, uh, we can be more efficient at it. Um, we all speak the same language. It's the same thing if it's a ICS two thirteen. If you're if you're working the incident command system, you know whether you're split, you're spinning the planning PU around or whatever. Right. We all have kind of some standards that we follow, and this is the standard in the traffic system. Is the radiogram format. It also provides some uh, tracing capability. So if we do send a message we get it relaying within the traffic system and for some reason it disappears we can start tracing it through the system uh, the key part of that is keeping a log of all of the messages you handle uh, if you take this to the next level and want to become an official relay station with the arrl and start um, uh, participating in with the uh, uh, the star reports or PSHR reports, which are uh, for folks that are official relay stations, they give me their their um, message counts each month and I turn that over to ARL headquarters uh, and you get some points and after a while you get a certificate if you meet the criteria and things. So there's some cool stuff there, uh, but it all starts with keeping a basic log and it's just what's the date, who was the message from, who did it go to and, you know, did I receive it, did I send it, did I, you know, that type of thing. Um, that's a little Little bit more next level beyond this uh, you know intro to things and if folks are interested I could div give talks on keeping logs and how to turn that into monthly reports and things but the key part there is is to is to keep a message show an example of a log I don't think I have one in the the deck but um, let me make a note here uh, show my log at and I will open up my file I, I do it in um, Excel I started with a sheet of paper, and I recommend that across the board, whether it's radiograms or your logs, start by doing it by hand. Um, I know I find that if I grab the pen and the piece of paper and I physically, it, I learn it a lot better that way. If I throw it into Excel and let some magic happen, then I haven't understood it. And worst case scenario, if I'm at a place where I don't have a computer, but I've got a radio and a sheet of paper and a pen, I got to know how to do that. So uh, definitely practice by hand first. And then once you get the proficiencies down, then you can look at, well, do I want to throw it in the spreadsheet and do some formulas or other, other groovy things like that? Okay, so this is the radiogram. Hopefully, most of you have it printed out. Uh, and again, this area is where a lot of the animations are, and and I don't think they're going to play well going over the internet. But I'm hoping in the recording they will flow. Uh, won't have any impact on on the training, but just a heads up: this might look a little goofy as things move around, such as now. So we'll break the radiogram up into chunks, uh, and we'll go through each one. Um, uh, one section at a time to give the lay of the land here. And we'll start with the header. Uh, so the very first part is the radiogram number. Uh, this is assigned by whoever is first filling it out. And it is really only for your tracking. So if I create a new message and it's going to move through the system, I need a way to identify it. And so if it's my first message, I personally started with one. My second message was two and and so on. Some folks take different approaches. They might use the month as a way to play into their numbers. So for example, if it's the 1st of March, then the message is 301. If it's the 2nd of March, it's 302. Um, that works if you're only moving one message a day type of thing. Uh, it just kind of depends on how you want to do that. For me, the simplest way was to start with the number one and move forward. Now, if you get numbers into like this is message number four thousand three hundred and you know that can be a little 
odd if you're just going sequentially you may want to reset it to one again at some point maybe after a couple of years or something like that i've i've had mine going for a couple of years i met message like 280 something like that so i haven't hit what i consider that unwieldy zone yet but you know if i get close to a thousand i would look at moving it back to number one the next box is the precedence um when you read this on the air, you always say the precedence in full, but when you fill it out on the radiogram, you can abbreviate it, um, except for emergency. You al always write the word emergency, and that is to help highlight the criticality of that radiogram. So emergency, I would always write out priority or welfare or routine. I just put the abbreviation, the initial, uh, but when you read it on the air, you would say routine. You wouldn't say R. The next one is handling instructions. This is an optional box that provides some information on how to handle the message as it's moving across the traffic system, as well as instructions for the station that's making that final delivery. Um, this should be in the, the handout that I, I linked to in the Eventbrite. Um, here they are here as well. Um, the most common one we're going to see is um, Hotel X-Ray Golf, uh, which says that delivery by, by mail or a paid phone call is not required. And if you do have to pay something to deliver it, never mind, don't deliver it, but let me know type of thing, right? So um, you can have more than one handling instruction. So it could be Hotel X-Ray Charlie Golf or you know different things like that. Um, Generally, the one you see is golf. And then what I consider to be the most disastrous uh, handling instruction is Delta, uh, which is to uh, report to the originating station, which would, let's say I wrote the original radiogram that I'm the originating station, report to me the station that you got it from the date and time you got it from them and also report who you sent it to and the date and time that you sent it and so essentially that's like putting a tracer on that radiogram and so if i move it to the first person well that first person's then got to send me a radiogram back saying here's when i got it from you then when they send it to the next person they have to send another radiogram saying well here's the date and time and i sent it to this station the station that got it also has to send a radiogram saying, okay, here's the date and time I got it from that person. And it just, oh yeah, it can balloon pretty hard. So uh, I would uh, only use Hotel X-Ray Delta in the most extreme, I really got to track the progress of this message type uh, scenario. Otherwise I would not use it at all. And if I ever got a message like that, I would highly question was that necessary, you know, short of some sort of life or death <laughs> type thing. <laughs> yeah, fun. Uh, David, I think we have different definitions of fun. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't use it. So, uh, okay. I think I've hammered that pretty good. We'll keep rolling. Station of origin. This is the station that originally filled out the radiogram. And so if I'm filling one out for myself, then I am the station of origin. If I'm filling it out for a friend of mine that doesn't have an amateur radio license, which is absolutely okay to do, we can move messages uh, for folks that do not have licenses. Um, I'm the one filling out the initial radiogram, so I am still the station of origin. So my call sign would go there. Um, the check is basically like a checksum. It's a count of the number of words or groups in the text section only, which we'll talk about in a bit. There's also another side note on this. If you're using shorthands, which I'll also talk about later, there's some convenient ways to say some very common phrases with only a couple of words. Then we put ARL before the check as a heads up to stations to say, there are some shorthands in this, in this radiogram, heads up that they're there. That'll make, I think, a little more sense later when we get into those shorthands. Place of origin is the location of the person who authored the message. Now, this can be a little bit confusing. Station of origin, when you're filling it out, is you. And so if you're filling it out for yourself, then the place of origin is where you're at. 
if you're filling it in for a friend, for example, and I'm in Dallas and they are in Irving, the place of origin is Irving. They're the person that is authoring the message. So the origin is from there. I'm the first ham that that worked this message. So I am the station of origin, but the place of origin is where the person authoring the message is. Hopefully that's that's clear, can be a little bit of a fun one, but um, just think of it if whoever is authoring the message, the place of origin is where they're at. And this uh, city state is a good way of doing that. So um, Dallas, Texas is how I would put that. Uh, uh, Good question. The station of origin stay the same throughout? Yes. So that information will not change. The information in this header will not change during the, the lifetime of this radiogram. This information stays static. Pretty much everything in the radiogram stays static. I'll show you the, the, the one or two spots where you kind of put your information as you're moving it along. But um, the the station of origin, the check, the play of it would all stay static while this thing's moving. Uh, question on sending messages to Colorado that don't get there. Can you hotel x-ray Delta to see where they're dying? Uh, I would again refrain from using hotel x-ray Delta except for very extreme circumstances where I got to guarantee the thing's going to get there. The alternative that I can give you would be uh, to send a uh, either through the traffic system or other means, email, phone call, I would start following the chain beginning with the first station you gave it to and say, can you tell me who you sent it to? And then when you get that, follow up with that next station and say, did you did you get this? Did you send it? Who'd you send it to? And trace it that way. If you do a hotel x-ray delta, it's going to gener generate a bunch of radiogram movement. Um, it is an option and ideally it needs to be honored because you're the one putting the message in. And so um, I don't understand why you're you're needing it. It's not up to me to make that judgment call. I can I can wonder like, and question, is that really necessary? But if I get a message that ho Hotel X-Ray Delta, I would honor that. But ideally you would just reach out to that and follow those, follow that message through those stations kind of on an individual basis. Yeah, okay. Uh, We'll keep rolling here. Time filed. Uh, this is also an optional field. So the handling instructions are optional. The time filed is optional, but you really should use it if it's emergency or priority traffic. Um, also, if it's welfare um, or if there's a Bravo handling instruction, which is to cancel the message if it's not delivered within so many hours because I got to know what time it, it entered the system. <laughs> and if I don't have that, I can't know how to do that. Uh, so, um, or messages like, you know, need generator in six hours. Well, six hours from when? Well, I'm going to look at the time filed for that. Um, there is a, a little bit of fuzziness on what does time filed mean? Um, some folks are in the camp that time filed is the time that I first check it into a traffic net. So regardless of whether I wrote it or not, the time filed becomes when I hop on the air and say, I have one going to Wisconsin or you know whatever that is. I am in the camp of if you are at an incident and the, uh, someone from the emergency services office says, I need a generator in six hours. And they're telling me to get that message moved. The time filed is when they made that request. I am the entry into the traffic system for them. And that is the time that they filed the request with the traffic system. Because if I get the message from that emergency services offer and it, officer and it takes me two hours to get it introduced into the traffic system, well, then the time filed is completely off from what it needs to be. So time filed, if you're writing the message on your own to check in or to, to list on a traffic net, that would be the time that you take it to the traffic net. But if you're taking something from someone else on their behalf, you are the entry point into the traffic system for them. And I would put that time. Again, this is an optional field and we really don't see it uh, in routine messages or traffic at all, but just an understanding of what that, that box is for. The last one in the header is the date. And this one's really easy. You just write the, the three month, uh, uh, three initials for the month and the date. Um, 
you don't need to put the year. I mean, if you've got a message that's lived in the traffic system for a year, it's way past going to be able to make it. So just put the month and the date. And I would read that as uh, January 1, 5 or March 3. Um, and again, UTC is preferred. So here in North Texas right now, uh, if I'm remembering my time shifts right, if you're at the 6.30 p.m. traffic net and it's the 18th today, then anything introduced there is the 18th. If you check into the late traffic net that happens at 11.30 p.m., it's still the 18th locally, but UTC, it's now the 19th. So the date is the 19th. You can use your local time zone if you want, um, but if you're going to do that, please put what that time zone is, if it's Central Daylight Time or Eastern Daylight Time or that type of thing, so that way we know what what the time zone was for that. Otherwise, it's going to be assumed to be uh, UTC. Well, David, you said 10.30 p.m. I don't know what I said instead. I guess I'll have to go back and look. But yeah, the late net for us is 10.30 p.m. All right, so here's how I would read this header on the air if I had everything filled in. Uh, I would say, please copy message number 312 routine hotel x-ray golf Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel 1 2 Dallas, Texas 2145 January 1 5. Now, notice how I kind of went a little slower than you would naturally say it. Again, it's so that the other person that is uh, filling out the radiogram on their end is able to keep up and not miss anything. The other part of it is I didn't need to read the, the, header, the, the section names. So I didn't have to say precedence routine, station of origin, K. We're all using the same format, so we know to roll right across with it. So there's no need to, I mean, you start with my number 312, you know, kick it off. But after that, you don't need to, uh, to, to read that. So um, some folks, uh, good point. Um, some folks will say Hotel X-Ray Golf, some won't. I do just to... Uh, kind of help clarify that I'm not giving my call sign at that point. If I hear hotel x-ray, I immediately go, oh, these are handling instructions. Um, some folks will just say golf, but for me, a, a best practice is to say hotel x-ray golf. No, that's a, that's a good point. Thanks for, for bringing that up. The other flip side of this is I did mention handling instructions in the time filed are optional. So if I don't have those, well, I just don't say anything about them. I would say, uh, please copy number 312, Routine, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel, 1-2, Dallas, Texas, January 1-5. And I don't need to say anything that I'm, I skip the handling instruction or I'm skipping or there's nothing there. You just keep right on rolling through it. We're, we're all working the same radiogram template, and it's one of those universally understood things that, that's picked up with, with time and, and building that traffic handling skill. So any questions on, on the header? And again, the header stays static through this whole thing. Okay, addressee, this is where you want it to go. <laughs> this kind of works generally like an envelope if you were putting it in the mail. Uh, the formats, first, last name, and call sign if they have one. If they don't have an uh, amateur radio license, then you just don't put anything. You can, you can send messages to family members that have no license. It's absolutely fine. But first, last name, call sign, address, city, state, zip, and the phone number. The last mile delivery is pretty much always done by phone. There are some options for you could drop it in the mail or you could go to their house, which I don't recommend. Um, safety is the number one priority and that type of thing. And I wouldn't want anybody driving to some person's home that they don't know to say, hi, I'm an amateur radio operator and I have this for you. you know, phone, please try to make final delivery by phone. There is an email field. Um, this is kind of frowned upon a little bit. Um, we would rather do the deliveries by phone, but if you absolutely don't have a phone number and it's got to get there by email, then you can include an email address, uh, but you need to write it out. So if it's uh, jane.do at example.com, then that is written as jane dot delta oscar tango do at sign or you know at both of those are acceptable at or at sign example dot dot com uh, 
for physical addresses, I'll go over that in just a second. We'll, you'll have that as well. But if you don't know the person's address, but you have the phone number, that can work because we can still make that delivery by phone. Uh, but if you can include an address, that's, that's helpful. Uh, the other exception to that I will give is, let's say I'm on our local traffic net and I'm sending a message to another amateur radio operator uh, that, um, that is on that net a lot. Well, I'm not going to say, here's a message to you and here's your address. I would just say, I have a message going to your station, and then we would keep following with it. Uh, in Morse code, how do you show breaks? Um, I am one of those hams that is not proficient at Morse code. I know in the text section, we will use um, initial x ray to show our breaks in the text. And so, um, I would need someone that's more proficient in a, a, a CW net or working CW to, to confirm that I'm right on the on the breaks as x-ray type of thing. But there are some positions where we break in radiogram movement, and I'll show that. Um, Bravo Tango, that's it. Yeah, I know that. I knew that. But thanks, Tony. Yeah, um, Bravo Tango. All right, let me keep rolling here. So let's say we want to send it to Jane Doe, Amateur Call, Alpha Romeo One Tango, because I'm just I'm just making it up. Um, it would turn uh, into exactly that on the radiogram, and here is how I would say it on the air: uh, going to Jane Doe, I spell Delta Oscar Echo, Amateur Call Alpha Romeo One Tango. Address figures one, two, three, mixed group eight five Tango Hotel Street, direction southeast, some town Wisconsin, zip figures zero zero one two one, phone figures three three zero five five five. Four four two four break. Now let's go through what all of that just was. Uh, so this is your introduction to pro signs. Uh, I spell indicates you're about to spell the word you just said, and if you're going to do that, uh, make sure you come in with the spelling pretty quickly after that, so that the receiving station knows you're spelling the thing you just said. So, do I spell Delta Oscar Echo? It's a good practice to. Uh, spell last names just to make sure they go through okay. Amateur call, you're about to give a, a call sign. Figures means you're about to give a series of numbers. So address figures, zip figures, phone figures. Uh, mixed group is a, a mix of letters and numbers. Uh, direction is used in the address to give that. Is it north? Is it southeast? Is it southwest? Break. This is one of those magic words where sometimes I'll get some feedback that I thought you only say break if you're going to um, jump in with emergency traffic or something like that. And you'll hear on some nets, I know in the Metroplex, you hear it pretty routinely that if you, if you have emergency or priority traffic, uh, break, break, followed by your call sign. Uh, and that is what would be used for that. But in the traffic nets, break is an indication that I'm done reading a section and I'm going to pause to see if you need me to repeat anything or if not tell me to go or keep going type of thing. So in this instance I would read the header, I would read the address, and then I would break and see if the other station needs me to come back with any fills for me to repeat anything. Print out of these pro signs. It's also part of the handout uh, that uh, was in the uh, Eventbrite. And so if you uh, grab that PDF, it'll have the list of uh, pro signs in there. Okay, let's. Um, oh, is voicemail okay? Um, so if you're uh, tracking your messages as being an official relay station, the only time we would count something as officially delivered is if you know for certain that the other person got it. So if it is a voicemail that says, hi, this is 555-1234, please leave your message, then you can leave the message and say, hi, I'm Aaron and I'm an amateur radio operator and I have a message for you that came over the national traffic system and here's what it says. Uh, if you have any questions, call me back at this number. Um, 
I don't know if the right person got it or not. So I wouldn't count that as delivered, but I would still leave the voicemail. Now, if the voicemail greeting is, hi, my name is Jane Doe. Well, now I've got confidence that I've got the right phone number. Sometimes these phone numbers aren't accurate. <laughs> so for, for folks that have worked on, you know, welcome to the hobby type messages, you'll know what I mean there. Um, but if the voicemail greeting gives you some confirmation that you've got the right person, then I would count that as delivered. And same thing. Hi, my name's Aaron. I'm an amateur radio operator, and I have this message. And um, you know, give me a call if you have any questions. Yeah, good, good, good point. Um, okay, to leave out the physical address from generating a service reply. Uh, again, it's better to have the address in there for formality. You never know if you're going to hit a station while the message is making its way back that just has to drop it in the mail or something like that. So uh, you should have the address in there, uh, even if it's a, a message coming back saying, you know, unable to deliver, you know, that type of thing. Okay, op notes. So there's two places where uh, operators notes come into play, and this is the first one. Uh, op notes here in the address relate to uh, handling or delivery. And so for this example, workday only would mean please only try making the phone call during work hours. And that's helpful if I've got a phone number that's a business, you know, no point in calling on the weekends. So I can give that clue. Very, very rarely do you get an op note in the address part. But FYI that it is possible that you could have something there. So that's the header and address. Uh, really fast here on the receiving station info, I would only fill this out if I'm putting it in the mail so that the person knows who I am. Um, otherwise, I already know who I am, so I don't need to fill it out. But um, if you are going to drop it in the mail, then you can put a note that says, this is my information if you know you have any questions type of thing. Yeah, that's that's an easy section. Now we'll get into the text. So this is where the meat of the the traffic message, uh, the message content is limited to 25 groups or words. So hence there's 25 blanks. I like to think of it as five dollars a word. I think Joanne Keith from the, <laughs> from the 7290 traffic that charges ten dollars. I only charge five, uh, but. Um, I like to think of it as, as to having some monetary value to it to emphasize uh, how important uh, brevity is and being concise. Uh, if you can say something in three words instead of 10, say it in the three words type of thing. Uh, so let's use this example uh, for something we want to send. Great seeing you yesterday. Hope to get together again soon, 73. So in radiograms, periods are written as either the, the letter X-ray, as an initial X-ray, or the word X-ray. Uh, if you have a question, you can put a question like that. Uh, the question mark becomes the word query. Exclamation points become the word exclamation. Those are pretty rare. They're rare, but know that they're there. Um, more commonly, you'll see X-rays uh, in things. So turning that into what we would put on the radiogram would be uh, great seeing you yesterday, initial X-ray. Hope to get together again soon, figure 7-3. Uh, notice how there's no X-ray between soon and 73. Uh, it's pretty easy to figure out that that was the end of the sentence. So why spend the $5 to put the X-ray there? Uh, I've done it, and I've I've caught myself in the middle of saying it on the air, and I'm like, okay, yep, I've got that five dollar X-ray that wasn't needed, but that's what I just read to you, so go with it, you know, and it moves. But yeah, there's no need to put an X-ray like that if it's very clear. Um, exception would be if I'm ending with a date or something like that. If I put August one zero seven three, that's that's got potential to be confusing, so I would put on August, you know, figures one zero, initial x-ray figures seven three to separate those out so that there's no no confusion there. Items like uh, x-rays and queries and things count as a word. Um, and so um, when you're counting the number of words for the check, as in this example, it's 12 or one two. So I would put uh, 12 in the check. Um, question, what if that is how the message was delivered to you? Then that is how it was delivered to you and keep moving it that way. We're not editing the messages in transit. Again, we want it to be a photocopy of what was introduced in the beginning. So if something comes to you that has a mistake, uh, that that's how the message came to you and that is how you keep it moving. 
uh, keep the word count the same. Yeah, you, you really should not be introducing words or removing words. We'll go through how a radiogram moves over the air to, to explain how we kind of use that check to help us with that. But no, you want the thing to be identical as it moves through the system. So I would say this, great, I'm gonna go a little faster, I won't pause. Great seeing you yesterday, initial x-ray. Hope to get together again soon, figure seven three break. And we're breaking again to pause to see if the receiving station needs any fills or if we're okay to go ahead to the, to the next part. So some more pro signs, um, initials, or some folks say letter group when you're giving initials, uh, break again. Other pro signs you might hear, say again, if I need you to say something, please say again word after together uh, please say again word before together so word before or word after please say again all after together well then that means you probably talk too fast the other station couldn't keep up <laughs> something like that um, affirmative and negative is preferred to yes or no it's a longer word so you have a better chance of hearing it over the air and if you did make a mistake and you need to correct it correction is the pro sign so if um, I say together, again, figure, oh, correction, soon. I say again, together, again, soon, figure seven, three. You can introduce that correction in there. So that's it for the text section. We then move on to the signature, which is basically uh, you're signing the message as being from you. There is no label there on the template to say this is the signature, but yes, it's directly below the text section and above the received sent area. Uh, generally just your first name and a call sign, Aaron, Amateur Call, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel. Um, and that's how I would say it on the air. End, uh, or so, sorry, signed, Aaron, amateur call, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel, end, number 312, no more, how copy. End, meaning that's the end of the radiogram. No more means I don't have any more radiograms to send you. If I had a couple of them, then I would say, well, I have one more or two more or no more. And how copy? Did you get it or do you need me to say anything again? That type of thing. So end um, book traffic is end book. I'll go into that in a bit. Um, did you copy it successfully? I roger your number 312 means uh, good copy or I got it, you know, type of thing. Op notes, we're going into that in just a bit. So you can put your op note, this is the second spot, after the signature, and this one relates to replies or service messages. Uh, so for example, uh, Aaron Amateur Call Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel op note, reply or service to Kilo Echo 5 Yankee Tango Alpha uh, is saying that if someone needs to send a reply to me or send a service message I was unable to deliver or something like that, don't send it to me, send it to Kilo Echo 5 Yankee Tango Alpha. And I use um, Roger's call sign specifically because here in the Metroplex, he handles a lot of uh, digital traffic coming from uh, Peter Dintelman uh, DL4FN out of Germany. And so if we need to send a message back to Peter, uh, Roger manages that for Peter. And so our messages to Peter go back through Roger. And that's where this, um, that's where this goes here. Could you leave a return address or phone number in the signature if you want them to have that information to reply? The op note would become very long. If you want to uh, include a phone number here, it's kind of frowned upon, but there's nothing in the rules that say, no, you may not. Um, if you can put it in the text section, you know, uh, please call me at, and then put the phone number, it would be better suited in the text. Um, usually the, the op notes are just mainly how to move it back through the traffic system. The op notes are focused on the traffic system side, the, the stations that are moving it and delivering it. So yeah, in the text would be better for that, yeah. That's a great question. Okay, that's generally the gist of the radiogram. The last part of it is just tracking the received sent info just so that you can know uh, who did you give it to or who did you get it from. Again, UTC in 24-hour time format is preferred. Um, and again, use a 
time zone indicator if, if you're gonna use local time. Uh, and so let's say I sent this to Roger KE5YTA on Jan 16 at 4.40 UTC, then uh, that would be how I'd fill out the bottom of the radiogram. I put DFW late because I personally like to track what net I was on when I moved that. Absolutely not required at all, but that's just something that I, I choose to do. It's a little extra piece of data for me if I, if I need it. And so based on everything that we just did, here's how this radiogram would look. And here, let me zoom in on a, on a bit just to help make it better. So um, all the sections that are filled in with the header, the address, um, the message text, the, the what we want to send signature, and then the information for uh, where I, um, where I sent it, who I relayed it to uh, as it moves through the traffic system. And if I received this from somebody, I would fill out the received section. And if I relayed it again, as I keep it moving through the traffic system, then I'd also fill out the sent side with that information. So um, what if we have the same message going to several people? So if I wanna say happy holidays or you know something like that, we call that book traffic. Uh, and in that case, only a couple pieces of it change. The number, because each radiogram has its own number. Uh, the address, of course, who are you sending it to? And then um, the, uh, the information on who you sent it to, you know, that'll change because you can't read everything at once. So if the first one might be at 440, the next one be at 441 or that type of thing. Um, so I would introduce it as I have a book of two, one going to Wisconsin, the other going to Michigan. And then when I read this, um, I would read the whole, ro the whole radiogram the first time and I would have if there's more than one station that's going to take this, like if I have someone that says I can take it to Wisconsin and I have another that says I can take it to Michigan, I will send it, say, to the one to Wisconsin first and read the whole thing. The person that can take it to Michigan should copy the common parts. That's the parts that aren't in the boxes there. And then after I'm done sending the first one to Wisconsin, I would jump over and just give these parts for the person that's going to take it to Michigan. And I would just say, uh, Yours, uh, yours to Michigan is number 312 going to Jane Doe, yada, 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 and number 312. And again, it'll have a different number than the others. Each one will have its own number. So the number and the address. Um, send, receive, UTC or local, that's kind of up to you. I personally use UTC across the board just for consistency. If you use local time, again, put the local time zone. The send and receive is for your tracking. And that's the what allows us to come back and trace it. If so, well, who'd you get it from and who'd you send it to and when, then you've got all of that information uh, written there. But I prefer consistency because if I'm building that muscle memory, and especially if I get into um, an emergency operations center or something, and they say, we need you to track everything UTC, well, then I've got that down. If they say, I need you to track everything local, then, well, I'll put the local time, but they still might want the 24-hour time format, but I'm familiar with that. So yeah, that's a good question. Okay, any questions? I'm kind of fire hosing you here a little bit, but uh, this all comes better with time. And again, uh, um, yeah. okay, so I'll say the <laughs> okay, so what can you put in the message or in the <laughs> in the text? Um, standard amateur radio rules apply, no bad words. Uh, you cannot conduct business over the air. This is still amateur radio. Um, you know, try to keep it friendly and, you know, that, that type of thing. Anybody can listen to these. They're like a postcard. Anybody can hear what the message is as it moves through the system. So, you know, to keep that in mind type of thing. But, um, you know, I don't know if I would, I would put big poopy pants in the message. You might get some laughs from some operators and then some might become offended and we go down a rat hole that I'm not about to do right now. Um, but I would try and follow some sort of standard, standard language. It also keeps the NTS in that light of professionalism that we are providing a public service. And if there is an emergency or something like that, and you need us to stand up and assist, we're here to help you in a, pro in a professional manner. So keep that in mind. Yeah, if you deliver a message, you can note that in the sent box. Absolutely. When I deliver the message, I keep track of the date and time of, of who I, I sent it to. Would we be able to move an invoice for medication, say, for a hospital? Um, 
Quick answer is probably not. Um, when you get into emergency traffic handling for something like that, I don't think the national traffic system is going to be the audience for that. I think it would be, um, you know, headed to the um, not the planning section's chief and not the other, but the administration section of the incident command system. They're the ones that are going to be handling all the billing and things. It'd be a very extremely extraordinary circumstance if we were in an incident and somebody came and said, I have to send this invoice right now. They're going to be more focused on, I've got people coming to the hospital and I need beds or I need, as like what's going on today, I need ventilators, I need masks, right? That's going to be the, the core focus of, of any traffic that's moving. So um, billing, totally not important. Go deal with it on the side type of thing. We're focused on the emergency, right? Get paid later type of thing. Yeah, that's a good question. All right, the shorthands I talked about earlier, these ARL numbered radiograms. Um, here's an example of one here that, that comes uh, through now and again. ARL 56, new amateur radio license, initial x-ray. Welcome to the hobby initial x-ray. Enjoy the fun and friendships you will make. Initial x-ray, figure 7-3. So um, ARL 56, uh, I've done this long enough to know what that is in the top of my head, at least pretty close. Uh, congratulations on your new amateur radio license, a most worthy and deserved achievement. Now, notice how much shorter it is to say ARL 56 versus that whole big long thing I just said. So shorthands provide a way to send common messages quickly. Uh, when you deliver it to the final station, I would not say, well, the message says ARL 56 New Amateur. They're not going to know what the heck that means. I would tell them the meaning of the of the message. And again, in the check, we indicate we're using a shorthand. So the check of 1-2 becomes Alfa Romeo Lima 1-2 to put that heads up that we're using the shorthand. Some common shorthands you'll see. Um, 47 is... Uh, uh, Confirming delivery, 50, greetings by amateur radio, 56, the congratulations. Um, 61, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, 67 is uh, undeliverable. Uh, so when you send a message back saying, I wasn't able to deliver because uh, phone number disconnected or, or something like that, that would be the shorthand I'd use there. I know that one says, please advise, but you're probably never going to hear anything about that message again. It will just, that will be the end of it at that point. Um, so again, this one, congratulations on your, and the new amateur radio license is the blank that's filled in after that between the, the six and the initial x-ray, a most worthy and deserved achievement. We always spell out these ARL numbers. So I would read that as um, initials Alpha Romeo Lima, 50 I spell Foxtrot India Foxtrot Tango Yankee, six, I spell Sierra India X-ray. Uh, spelling them out like that emphasizes that they are written words rather than a set of numbers. If it was numbers, I'd say figures five, six, but in this case, they're two different words or two different groups. So I would say 50, I spell Foxtrot India Foxtrot Tango Yankee, six, I spell, and I'm doing that whole pro sign over again to help differentiate that these are two different uh, word groups. All right, some other quick examples here. Um, ARL 50, John, and congrats on new amateur radio license. So this is uh, greetings by amateur radio, John, and congrats on new amateur radio license. Enjoy all that the radio community offers. Best regards. Now, this one has the op note uh, that I talked about earlier with Peter, DL4FN, and this is where it says op note reply or service message to Peter via Roger in Richardson, Texas, and there's a zip code. So in this case, we give an idea of where Roger is because if this message comes in through Roger and it's being delivered in Oklahoma, uh, we're giving a clue that, that that reply needs to go back through Roger and he's in Texas. So I don't need to go look, well, where does Ro where's Roger at? I got to know how to route this thing. So where's he at? You know, I've, I've got my clue there in the op note. So that helps the reply get back to it related to, you know, servicing or if the other person has a reply. 
this one I did drop in the mail. So at the time, this was my, my contact address. And so I filled that information in before I put this in the mail. I also put a little letter that explains, you know, this is a, an amateur radio service and that's what this is. And here's the translation, but I'm giving you a copy of the real radiogram in case you're curious, so. Uh, one more example here, again, from Peter. Hello, Gary, initial x-ray. Congrats on your new amateur radio license, initial x-ray. Ask delivering him for more info about this message, initial x-ray, best wishes. And again, I'm reading that a lot faster than I would do over the air just for, for sake of time. Okay, so some quick hands-on practice with filling out some radiograms. I'm going to give everybody some time here uh, to um, practice putting one together. So here's what I would want you to put. Um, send a message from you, and this can be your message number one. Um, and let's say this is routine traffic, and so it'd be your message number one and the uh, address information I have there and my phone number. And in the message you would say, um, hope to hear you on the band soon, uh, 73. So I'll give you a moment to do that. Uh, while folks are working on that, I'll open it up uh, for questions. If anybody has any questions on anything through now, I'll also take a quick second to hydrate. Uh, go ahead and work on um, putting those together and if you have any questions, you can throw them in the chat here for a bit. And if this is a little difficult, that's okay. This is your first one. So um, if there are sections that, well, did I need to put that or did I do this right? We're going to go over that in just a bit. I'll show you. Uh, generally how it should look on, on your end type of thing. Um, and we'll have another little bit of practice here in a bit. So I'll give you another uh, quick minute here to, to keep going and then uh, uh, with filling it out and then we'll, we'll uh, move forward here. Okay. Where can we get a rundown of regions and cycles, any sort of maps or timetables? I have not seen any maps at all. Um, timetables, again, would go back to uh, your section traffic manager in here in North Texas on the webpage ARRLNTX.org. That's Alpha Romeo, Romeo Lima, November Tango X ray. Dot org. Uh, there is an NTS section uh, that has a list of area nets. Um, that you can look at to see uh, kind of those that happen in the North Texas section and kind of move things in and out of the area. Um, as far as um, regional nets, you'll be looking for, um, or like larger area nets would be like the central area net and, and those types of things. Those are the much larger ones. I will say this for um, the um, phone base nets, like 7290, um, with the way that um, <laughs> the band conditions are right now. Uh, it's a little bit interesting to, to move things there, uh, but it is still doable if the if the bands open up for a bit. Um, Morse code is also really good. Digital is, is excellent at punching through the conditions we have right now. Uh, so thankfully the digital traffic network is there, um, but uh, the regional net information, check with the, the section traffic manager. And again, ours for North Texas are all posted on the North Texas webpage. So, okay, wherever you're at with filling out the radiogram, we're gonna keep moving here. So uh, let me zoom in just to, to help this out. So assuming this is your number one, um, I would have one in the number box, R for routine in the precedence, um, um, your call sign, the check is nine. There are nine uh, words or groups in the message excuse me, place of origin is going to be wherever you're at. The date would be today, so April 1-8. Then my address information uh, will be in, in the, the two and the phone number, then the message itself, and then uh, your call, your name and your call sign. So excellent question. Do you say um, initials PO box type of thing? Yeah, how about I read this and that'll help it, but yeah, you would. So I would say, uh, please copy my number one routine Kilo 8, Alpha, Mike, Hotel, 9, or Niner, 
Dallas, Texas, April 1, 8, going to Aaron Hewlett, I spell Hotel Uniform Lima, Echo Tango Tango, amateur call Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel, address initials Papa Oscar, box, figures 4, 7, niner. Little Elm, Texas, zip figures 75068, phone figures 469er 6302528. Break. And at this point, I would wait for the other station to see, you know, please say again, phone number, or please say again, uh, city, or, uh, you know, please spell Aaron, or that, that type of thing. Uh, if everything's good, they're going to say go, go ahead, go text, something like that. So if I get the go, then I'll, I'll start with the, the, the text. Hope to hear you on the band's soon figures seven three break and again that break to put the pause and let the other station come back and say you know please say again word after the or you know something like that uh, if you have the word to like that and it's not immediately clear from the context i would i would spell it i would you know hope to i spell tango oscar right instead of you know t-o-o -O or t-w-o um you, you can do those spellings like that on those once the station on the other end says go go ahead go signature i would say signed aaron amateur call kilo eight alpha mike hotel and number one no more how copy and then have the other station come back and say i got good copy or roger your number one thanks for the traffic type of thing so um, is pro sign or wording address initials? Yeah, I said address initials um, or letter group is another valid um, pro sign for giving initials like that. I say initials. Um, it's a tomato, tomato type thing. Um, but address initials, Papa Oscar. Um, the address is to just make, you know, confirm I'm introducing the address part now because you can have radiograms that go to more than one person. I mean, you could have one going to Aaron Hewlett, uh, Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel, and John Doe, Jane Doe, Tom Smith. You know, and so by saying address, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, clarifying that. I'm going to make a note of that. I think that's a good point um, after name call. I think that's a great point. Um, address figures for a street address is absolutely right. So if it was uh, 123 Fake Street, I would say address figures 123 Fake Street. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do another uh, kind of walkthrough here in a bit too. So that's kind of the premise on radiograms and filling them out and how to how to move them just for some discussions on on how you can participate type of thing on on traffic nets. Um, They'll generally start with some sort of preamble of, hi, welcome to the traffic net, and here's how it goes. And um, then they'll take check-ins. Um, they may say, I'm only taking check-ins from stations with traffic, which means I have radiograms that I need to move, or without traffic, which means I'm participating in the net. I don't have any radiograms to list or bring, but I'm available to take traffic if you need me to keep it moving, whether to take it to another traffic net or to deliver it. Uh, and then after the, the check-ins, the relaying begins where stations will connect together to move that across. And so we will walk uh, through that in a bit. Here's what I would put together kind of as my log as a net control station. And the, the, the NCS, the net control, is kind of the traffic director. If you've ever participated in a formal net, they kind of pass the baton around for people to speak type of thing. Um, and so here in this case, I'm the uh, the uh, net control station. Um, and we had Calvin check in, followed by Don. And Don was able to take things to the Texas traffic net. So I list him as a liaison to Tex. Roger and John are able to take things to the digital traffic net. So I list them as digital. Uh, and then Corky checked in. Now, as far as things that people brought, I didn't bring anything. Calvin had one to Bowie. 
uh, Roger had a book of five. So that's the same text going to five different destinations. So we only have to read the text and the station of origin once. And then I just get the message number and address for the other four. Um, John had a book of three along with one a single, we would call that, uh, headed to Burleson, and Corky had a net report. David, good point. Texas, the uh, the CW net here. Uh, no, Texas traffic net and Texas CW net are two different nets. So um, uh, Texas CW net uh, um, would be, um, uh, is, that's right, is Texas the CW net, and TTN is the Texas traffic network. That's right. So uh, Texas the CW net, yeah. So as folks are checking in, we'll learn what other nets they can interface with and what traffic that they're bringing and that type of thing. Um, why didn't Roger send his traffic using his digital capability? Well, um, so two to Dallas, one to Plano, one to Prosper, one to Melissa in that book of five are all here in the Metroplex. And so um, they're brought to the the local traffic net in here here in dallas for local delivery the last mile delivery and so let's i'm going to assume because i don't know where those came from they came from peter in um, germany or they could have come from uh what is it lauren pimentel and one iqi is in Massachusetts, or am I mixing them up with Chris? Anyway, it came out of area and it's come here now for final delivery. So he's bringing it to the local traffic net for local delivery. So yeah, that's a good question there. Uh, so here's how I would do this as net control. I would say if first station, please call the second station to pick up a message to Dallas. And then that first station would say, this is AB1 DE, I'm ready to copy your message to Dallas. And then the conversation would begin. Thank you, and please copy my number one routine, Kilo 8 Alpha Michael Dell, break, you know, go through the whole thing and break. To say again, or please spell, or those things. Otherwise, go ahead, go text, go. Um, then they'd read the text section and break. Any fills that need to happen, please say again this, or please spell that, and then go, signed name, call sign, and number one, no more how copy. I, Roger, your number one. Thanks for the traffic. This is K8 AMH. Thank you for taking it, uh, AB1DE, back to net control. Uh, if there was book traffic, it would continue in that type of thing, but that's generally how something would move. If you listen to traffic nets, which is an excellent thing to do before you participate, listen, 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 you'll get a better picture of the flow of things, uh, but this gives you a good breakdown so that when you do listen, you have an idea of uh, what's about to, to happen there. Um, so I've already moved one before. I'll move this one just for fun. I would say, uh, please copy my number 312 routine. And I'm going to go faster for this just for time. Uh, number 312 routine, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel, 12 Dallas, Texas, January 15, going to Jane Doe, I spell Delta, Oscar Echo, Amateur Call, Alpha Romeo, 1 Tango. Address figures 123, mixed group 85 Tango Hotel Street, Direction southeast, some town, Wisconsin, zip figures 00121, phone figures 330-555-4424. Break, and I get the go. Great seeing you yesterday, initial x-ray. Hope to get together again soon, figures 73. Break, and I wait for the other station to say go. Assigned Aaron, amateur call, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel, end number 312, no more how copy. Hi, Roger, you're 312, thanks for the traffic. And, you know, and then we'd go back to, to net control. All right, so coming up to the kind of the conclusion here, I'm gonna, uh, relay a message to all of you for the heck of it here, and I will uh, read it as if I were reading it on the air. I promise I will go slow and um, we'll um, give this a go here to see uh, if any questions come up or I thought I was supposed to do this, but I didn't or you know that type of thing. So again, mistakes are okay. These are uh, opportunities to learn. And so let's do that here. And a quick read on Melissa's comment here. Um, okay, so letting go of the push to talk button after the date and um, you know before you start reading the address type of thing. Different nets have different um, ways that they run. I like to call them the, the individual's net's personality. Uh, and so some nets may want you to uh, read the header and then let up for a bit 
and then read the address. Some might want you to just scream through the whole thing and then break after the phone number and then let up or things. You'll get that personality of that net from listening to it before you jump in. Um, and that's good advice for any net. Uh, I would recommend listening for a bit to get a feel for the flow of that net before jumping in. Um, but um, here in the in the metroplex on the on the local traffic nets we read the header and then we let up on the push the talk button for a bit and then we uh push it again and then give the um the the destination information before we break and and keep going with things yeah all right so let's um oh yeah repeat or reset you don't time it out if you're spending more than three minutes reading the header and address so yahoo but yeah okay let me quick drink here Okay, hopefully everybody's ready to copy. You've got your blank radiogram. Again, I promise I'm gonna go nice and slow, just as I would on the air. And uh, uh, you at this point, so if net control told us to, to move this traffic between the two of us, you would say, K8AMH, this is your call sign. I'm ready to take your traffic, or I'm ready to copy, or something like that. And I would say, other station, this is K8AMH. Thank you so much for taking this. And here we go. It's number 404, routine, kilo 8, alpha, Mike hotel, 16, Dallas, Texas, April 1-8, going to your station. Break. And then for your station, you can just put your call sign. I, I, I can't individualize this for all your addresses. Okay, somebody gave me a go. Good. Okay. Uh, go with text. Okay. Thank you for attending this talk today, initial x-ray, hope to receive traffic from you soon, figures 7-3, break. And then someone would tell me go, which there we go, I signed Aaron, amateur call, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel, end number 404, no more, how copy. And so um, at this point, it's going to look really close to this. This, this deck, uh, when I filled out the samples, was from January, so it still says Jan 29. But here is exactly how this would look. It'd be number 404, routine, K8AMH in the origin, check of 16, uh, Dallas, Texas, and it'll be April 18. Uh, nothing in the handling instructions or time filed because I didn't give those pieces of information. In the two would be your call sign or something like that. And then in the text, thank you for attending this talk today, today uh, initial x-ray, hope to receive traffic from you soon, 73. And then the signature line, Aaron, K8AMH. And then the receive line, uh, you'd put uh, from from K8AMH, uh, the date and the time, and for the net, I mean, you can leave that blank. Uh, it's optional if you want to fill that in, but you know, date would be April 1 8, and the time would be 2024, 2025, something like that, right now. So, uh, any questions on how this was filled out? Anybody have a, uh, an item that I can clarify or, or dive a little deeper on, or, or that type of thing here? Well, if anybody's typing, I'll uh, kind of uh, go forward. We're at the questions part. This is the tail end. I still have uh, the question. I think it was Melissa wanted to know uh, what my log looks like, and I'll uh, uh, jump into that in a bit. <laughs> Hotel x-ray uh, box is tiny. It sure is. <laughs> uh, so if, uh, uh, you know, you got to put something, you know, right above it or, you know, something like that. What are you doing, PowerPoint? Come on. Uh, there we go. So if you got to put it above it or something like that, then yeah, that's a tiny box. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's good for the only one instruction like golf or, you know, something like that. But if you've got a, <laughs> a chain, you know, that's a, that's a good time. So, um, yeah. So as far as other things you do, I highly encourage you to find a local traffic net. Um, Oh, would you call out the time as Zulu? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Um, if uh, if I'm using UTC, 
then I wouldn't put any sort of time zone indicator on it at all. It's one of those uh, uh, understood languages that um, if I didn't put a time zone on it, then it's UTC type of thing. That That is the assumption. For routine traffic, it's not as urgent. If it's emergency or priority or, you know, something like that, then, you know, yeah, you better make darn sure that, you know, if you're using UTC that that's it or if you've got a local time zone, put that time zone information there because that, that changes the meaning a lot. So... Um, where and when are the traffic nets in, in the area? So here in the Metroplex, um, the quick and easy one uh, for many folks to get is on two meters. So you just need a, 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 a technician level license. Uh, it happens twice a day, 6.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. David's got the link to that, uh, uh, to the site with information. That's dfwtrafficnet.org. Uh, the early is on the uh, Dallas machine W5FC at 6.30 p.m. And the late is on WA5CKF in Irving. That's at, at 10.30. I admit I don't know the, the frequencies offhand. Uh, my radio lazily remembers that for me. Uh, but dfwtrafficnet.org has information on, on those nets. They happen every day. Um, and... Uh, uh, DFW traffic nets the place for that for the uh, area nets regional nets things like 7290 um the Texas traffic net, the CW net, um, those types of things, head to ARRLNTX.org for information on those nets. I also have information on my uh, my webpage, k8amh.com. Uh, I also have a bunch of traffic statistics. So for traffic that's moving through uh, North Texas, I get reports from official relay stations and uh, traffic net managers. And I uh, compile that information for ARL headquarters in Connecticut. But I put all of that information up on the web page uh, as a traffic statistics, just to give some insight as to, to how much traffic is, is moving through the area and, and how much time we're spending on the air devoted to, to traffic handling. So um, any traffic nets between Tyler and Dallas? Not that I know of. I've, I've been out to Tyler and gave a, a quick version of this presentation there. And I had heard that there was some form of a, of a traffic net there, but I don't know if it is a, a national traffic system traffic net or something else. I've tried to connect on that, but haven't been successful. If, if somebody knows or can get me connected to the right folks, I'm definitely interested. Or uh, if you're interested in setting up a traffic net and want to get into the logistics of it, uh, the key part is everything has to move over the air. Even digital still moves over the air. Uh, no internet in this or anything like that. That defeats the purpose, which is if we're providing emergency communications, there is no internet, right? So everything moves over the air. But if you want to look into a, a traffic net and standing one up, the key part is we got to get that link for you to move traffic out of your local area. But definitely email me. I've got my you know relay email there, k8amh at arrl.org, <laughs> uh, if you want to um, uh, see about uh, you know investigating a traffic net and how we can get you connected in there and that that type of thing. Would, would love to have that conversation. Um, uh, I will, um, let me see if I can pull up my, um, my traffic spreadsheet, which don't ask me where it is because I use a shortcut to find it, but I found it. <laughs> so uh, let me get that open here. Now, I am also an official relay station, kind of part of the job of being the section traffic manager. Uh, this is the wrong file. This is the file I use to track the, the nets. Uh, so this is where I keep all the check-ins and who has announcements and um, what traffic was brought to headed to Grapevine. And here's where I track their movement out. You know, here's what's listed on the left and here's what I actually moved on the right. Um, and then I've, again, because I've done all that hands-on practice, I have a bunch of nifty formulas that put together my report that I uh, turn into the, the net manager, just like any other net control station, uh, with here's the statistics from that net. Here's the date, time, how long it lasted, how many check-ins we had, how many pieces of traffic we moved type of thing, right? I turn all that in and... Um, uh, that all gets compiled into a monthly report uh, that has been sent to me at the end of the month. And I then send that information into um, Connecticut and uh, 
for the public service honor roll uh, for those of you that are ARRL members and get the magazine page 105 or so there's a public service honor roll section that um, that gives thanks to those stations that are devoted to public service such as traffic handling and there's some points requirements to qualify um, but you can see the the list of official relay stations and how many points they've accumulated for the month as they you know are you know there to help with traffic handling and other public service items like um you know participating in aries nets or in simulated emergency tests or uh time in actual incidents providing communications is a whole different area i could dive into but i'll save that for another session uh, at some stage so um here is my very very crazy um log that I use to track all of the different aspects of turning in my points um, uh, at the end of the month for my report to, to, to headquarters. Um, my net participation log, there's a, a part, oh, you're welcome everybody, if you have to drop off, it, uh, no worries, again, I'll, I'll work on the recording and that type of thing, and thank you for jumping in today, I'm, I'm just really excited by the amount of, of everybody that turned out and, and you know, how far out of Texas this went, so thank you, but if you'd like to stick around, I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit more to answer some of these kind of insights and things like that. Uh, and there's another class that goes into the advanced, if you want to become an official relay station and start compiling things, you're about to get the the, the extreme fire hose here as I walk through this, but yeah, I'll, I'll work on uh, setting up uh, a, a class that goes more into the, the tracking and, and um, you know, those types of things. So, um, so on this tab, I have the number, the nets that I participate in. So for the DFW traffic nets, which are the only ones I'm in right now, uh, we're um, currently building our, our new home. And so all of my HF equipment's in storage while I'm in an apartment. And I didn't want to go down that path of solving HF in an apartment. And so, you know how that is, we should only be, you know, out of it for about, you know, six or eight months. And well, it's gonna be a little longer than that, but, uh, for now, you know, my main things are the, are the DFW nets. So I track, did I attend the early? Did I uh, attend the late? For my own fun, I track whether I was a net control station or an alternate. I also track if I'm on Aries nets or Skywarn nets or things like that. Um, so this becomes part of my score of how many nets did I participate in. Here's my traffic log. Um, so the date, when did I get it? And I use UTC. Uh, this message number is just, generated so I have um, some unique IDs to put with all of these lines. Um, but the date, the, the, the number, the message number on that radiogram, who the station of origin was, the destination, where is it going? And then what did I, um, let me go back here, what did I do with it? Did I, did I originate that message? I filled it out for someone else. I can't originate my own, but if someone else says, can you send this for me, then that counts as originate. Uh, did I receive this message from somebody? Did I send it to somebody else or did I deliver it? And deliver it's another fun one because deliver only counts if it's like over the phone or something like that. If I send it over the air that to the destination, then that counts as sent. So if you move it over the air, it's sent no matter what. Delivery is if I did by phone or something like that. And so this is how I track my, my, my traffic in and out. And I do one individual line for each movement. Uh, so there's a line for, you know, I received it. There's a line for I sent it. There's a line for I delivered it. I do everything one by one because it might be a different date. I might have gotten it on the first, right? But I didn't deliver it until the second. So I do individual lines to track each of those uh, movements. And I also track things like my service participation if I'm in radio drills or things, unplanned emergency response, um, and then that all turns into my monthly report. And this is where I would need to dive in into what all of this report is. But um, there are different categories. Um, K8AMH.com has um, a breakdown of what all of these different point values are. Uh, if, you, if you start diving into uh, the statistics, I have it all explained there because I have all the statistics from our section official relay station. So I have explanations to explain what are all these numbers I'm showing you. Um, but all of this information gets compiled together that then turns into this very cryptic string that that's what turns into the um, 
that's what turns into my report to, to headquarters and other official relay stations put together the same thing. So yeah, that's, that's my, um, that's my monthly report that I put together for, um, headquarters. Um, okay. Let me catch up on the conversation here. Can you explain the liaison duties? So, um, liaisons uh, and i'm going to focus kind of on the dfw traffic nets uh because we'll during the the net check-ins we will ask for for liaison uh stations and so i'll say do i have a liaison for texas traffic net do i have a liaison for texas cw net what we're asking there is um do i have somebody that is able to take traffic to that net. So if I say, do I have a liaison for the 7290 traffic net and someone checks in as a liaison, I as the net control station know that if I need to move something out of the Metroplex um, that say is maybe further south in Texas, I can move that through 7290. And that's kind of some tribal knowledge that gets built over time. And so knowing that I have a liaison, someone that can take traffic to 7290, then I can connect that station with whoever has the, the, the radiogram to move it so that then that station will take it to 7290. So that's that's the liaison role. We also have a in the, the Metroplex traffic and that's a liaison for uh, who can take traffic to the late session or who can take it to the early session. So let's say we're at the early traffic net at 6.30 p.m. And I've got a piece of traffic that I've got to move now. For example, I need to give a net report, but I'm going to be traveling for the next week. So I got to move it today or I'm not going to be able to move it for a week. So I need someone to take it now, but I can't get it delivered to where I need to go. The late liaison, if they if someone checks in as a late liaison, then is a is a an option for me to to relay that net report that that traffic to that liaison who will then on my behalf take it to the late traffic net at 10 30 saying i have this piece of traffic headed to so and such um but i just am sending it through that person they're lia they're acting as a liaison to take it to the late traffic net to help keep it moving so hopefully that explains kind of the liaison duties um can I put an example of the log on on the web page? Yeah, now let me make a note. I, I don't know if I had that in the plant log example online. So on k8amh.com, I have a lot of this information there broken down. Uh, if you haven't explored it, there's a whole training section that kind of takes this into chunks. And I think I have one on book traffic I haven't completed yet. And then going into official relay station land is uh, a, a deep subject. So take a little bit of time to, to work on that. Um, but I'll look into doing that. Am I really from Little Elm? No, I grew up in Michigan originally. So hence the eight in my call sign, Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel. Uh, those are my initials. And no, I'm not changing it. Uh, so do you have to be approved to be a liaison? So there's, um, again, this can be kind of the personality of the net type of thing. And that would be uh, up to the direction of the, the net manager, whoever runs that net, what their processes are for acting as a liaison. Uh, with the DFW Metroplex traffic nets, uh, they are a dedicated traffic net, but they're also a training net. Um, and so, you know, if things have hit the fan, we're gonna be very, very formal and efficient, you know, but, um, you know, in off times, you know, we're there to help people learn and, and that type of thing. Um, but for liaisons on the, on the DFW nets, um, as long as you, follow through, right? You're committing, let's say I'm at the early net and I'm saying I'll be liaison for late. I'm committing that I'm going to be at the late traffic net. Now, sometimes life happens, but I am committing to be at the late net, so I better be there. And that's like the main requirement. So there's no, you know, get the signature to say, all right, you are approved to liaison to late traffic net or whatever. It's, you know, if you're stepping up, make sure to follow through, you know, and that type of thing. A uh, RACI's liaison. So um, uh, question on um, that. Let me just, just to have something on the screen besides the, the Windows background. Um, Liaisons to Aries or Racy's. Uh, so, especially with Aries, uh, 
the Amateur Radio Emergency Service is another public service program from ARRL. Um, just as the traffic system is, we're kind of sister programs in ARRL's public safety offerings or public service offerings. Um, if there is an ARIES net or some need to stand up ARIES during an, an incident, um, there is um, an official checkbox for having a national traffic system liaison where if there's something happening in that ARIES net that's in that area and they need to send something out of the area, they can do it through the national traffic system and there would be a person that's the liaison between the ARIES net or the ARIES you know, whatever stood up and the national traffic system. And they would relay those uh, radiograms between ARIES and the national traffic system back and forth. Um, similar with RACES, um, I don't know if they have a checkbox in their program, but for ARIES, when they give their month, ARIES also gives monthly statistics to, to headquarters in Connecticut. Uh, there is an ask of, did you have any national traffic system liaisons participate in your ARRL nets? And so that's tracked on the ARRL side um, for ARIES. Uh, the RACES side, because that's a whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, civic radio service that's government and it's actually a whole different scope than amateur radio. It's one of the fun things with RACES. We're still using amateur radio equipment and frequencies and things, but if someone goes into RACES mode, they've effectively left the amateur radio service and are now operating in the RACES radio service, but you can still liaison between RACES and the national traffic system. So for, for, for DFW, we have some areas that stand up RACES nets, other areas stand up ARIES nets. Some might go between the two, depending. Um, so we take liaisons for both. Um, you would want to work with your um, ARIES emergency coordinator or whoever your RACES coordinator is to get that authorization to act as a liaison between that public safety group and the national traffic system. That one I would not do on my own. That one should definitely have sign off from your emergency coordinator. Um, I never hear anyone chime in when liaisons are asked for. Depends on who's available. We're not in emergency mode, thankfully, right? Um, so uh, a lot of times it's, um, you know, folks are volunteering and if they're available and near their radio and want to jump in and participate and they can be a liaison to um, 7290 or they can be a liaison for their races group, then they can check in as that. Um, some groups, I know Irving is really excellent at this, they require that their um, their members to send uh, traffic uh, as part of their qualifying uh, qualifying to participate. So um, we'll get folks that come in from 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 Irving uh, to meet those requirements. And then again, it's kind of up to those local areas if they want an NTS liaison or not type of thing. So would love more participation, of course. And I'm hoping that this this training session helps folks get more familiar with traffic handling and become comfortable with jumping in type of thing. Yeah. Um, and again, you're welcome, everybody, for putting this together. Yeah, eight races is appointed. Yeah, the the the, the liaisons for those other public safety groups. And, and when you think um, Mars, the Military Auxiliary Radio Service, right? That would be something else that I wouldn't just necessarily jump in. I'd want to coordinate that back and forth. But um, you know, as far as later, early, you know, f for um, uh, DFW nets, you know, that. You know, you could generally take that, but uh, for others, and same thing with other traffic nets like you know, 7290, but be sure to follow up on those commitments. But for Mars or um, Aries or Races, yeah, definitely work with your coordinators on, on those. Uh, Mars is a whole area that I also don't know. Um, I haven't uh, I haven't jumped in on that. And thanks, David, for the, are you here all week? Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different aspects of, of amateur radio and the traffic system is just another one of those. So, you know, hopefully you've, you've all found this helpful. If there are any other questions, I can, you know, stick around here for another uh, little bit. Um, um, yeah, no, thank you, everybody. Again, it was, it was kind of a let's test the waters and, you know, stood this up and, uh, you know, you know, we were in the North Texas section. We're like, well, let's see how this goes and uh, let's try Eventbrite. And it was good in some places and a little interesting in others. I need to figure out a better way to, um, 
to get the confirmations out to folks to say you are registered and please ignore the ever uh, uh, the, um, um, the 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 tickets because they don't matter and here's the the meeting information and you know and that that type of thing but this again was all a, let's give this a spin you know if, if you do nothing then you do nothing and if you do anything then you're doing something and you give it a spin so I'm, I'm excited by how many people registered and turned up and and I know we had a couple of folks that had some some hiccups and hopefully that the video assuming everything is good we can get that that posted here in near time and uh, if you have any other questions or anything you can visit the section web page you can visit my web page uh, feel free to shoot me an email Facebook Twitter uh, otherwise uh, if you're here in the Metroplex would love to hear you on the on the local traffic nets and I regularly participate in those I'm the uh, the net control station for Monday earlies so uh, 6 30 p.m. on W5 FC I'm um, the net control station and um, like I said, sometimes I make mistakes and that's all part of it. It's all, all an opportunity to learn and grow your skill set. And, you know, at least in our case, in a, you know, in a fun and welcoming environment where, you know, we really want to help you out. So, um, awesome. Again, thank you, everybody. No other, no other questions. Do a practice net. Hey, the real nets are a great place to practice, but uh, I'll keep that, I'll keep that one in mind. <laughs> so, all right, again, uh, everybody, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, again, jump in, participate. Um, that's the that's the best way to get in. And I'd welcome to have you come to my nets and um, you know any of the other traffic nets. We're a really good group here in, in DFW for the traffic nets there. And uh, I know Joanne, she's excellent at giving these trainings as well. And and seventy two ninety and you know working with some. Um, and other folks from uh, CW and the, te the Texas Traffic Net, and you know, exchanging information with them. It is a really great group, and you know, really, really great for me to be part of it. And I'm glad I could could share all this with you. So again, thank you so much for attending, and I hope to hear you. And feel free to send me a piece of traffic, and I'll definitely send you one back. So, 73, everybody, thank you so much. Stay safe and everything, and uh, we'll catch you. We'll catch you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.